patients and families are the reason why we're here. It's the reason we come to work every day. And so through our annual report, we've really been able to work side by side with them and then reflect their perspective, their experience, and the accomplishments from their lens into the annual report. So I'm incredibly proud of the final product. It's been amazing to see our patients take such an active part of this work and to see their excitement and engagement in all of the steps of this work. It's been really fantastic. And I think the annual report is just one way that we engage our patients and families. And I can't wait to see other opportunities that will come our way uh, for patients and families to participate in the different projects and activities we have taking place at the hospital. I really like the annual report. I love the content that I read in it. It showcases some of the most beautiful work that we do at Ontario Shores. But how the report has been put together is the masterpiece. So the idea of uh, co-partnering and co-designing this piece of work with the people that we serve, with the four patients who've taken on very lead roles, including the role of a co-editor in pulling this work together, is just masterful. So this is basically our team. So that was really cool to see you guys working together and, and start that process of, the, of the, the, the graphical design piece of the annual report. So part of this project is the fact that we're here to support each other. The basic idea of it is that it's going to be kind of like a magazine. Well, for me, it's, it's, I guess it's kind of cool to like have your ideas and then see them in print too, right? Like, um, you're creating something that people are going to see and, you know, that's going to have important information to be given out. So, I'm excited mostly about the creative part of it. I like doing that kind of research and like design and layout and art and so um, so yeah for me that was the biggest draw was that creative part of it because um, like with, with the nursing part the, like I love nursing but that's not just I'm not just a nurse so um, before I was a nurse you know, I was an artist, I was a musician, I was a, you know, a filmmaker, all those things at some point in my life. Um, maybe not on a grand scale, but you know what I mean? Like those all made, um, those are all parts that make up who I am as a person. So I'm not just my diagnosis, I'm not just my, um, I'm not just what, what is perceived as being wrong with me. And sometimes when you're dealing with the diagnosis and things aren't going well, it's easy to forget all those other things that make you who you are. I guess I would have to say that I'm feeling a sense of accomplishment, that I'm achieving things. When I first came here, I felt that that wasn't something I was doing at all in my life, that I was going nowhere, that I was stuck and having issue after issue. Now having progressed through different programs and the experiences here, now being involved in this particular project, I can look back recently on my life and see things that give me a sense of accomplishment and that I'm, I take pride in. When I think what you've given to me and all the other staff here, it's, it's amazing. It's a personal growth. It's putting me outside of my comfort zone. It's um, helping me even in my return to work, just by um, writing the stories and following through, but mostly personal growth. It's pretty encouraging. Um, having gone through some of the programs here myself, I feel pretty good. Um, but talking to Ian and knowing that he is out there to making people aware um, that someone can recover from such a situation, um, I think the help that he's received is great and that he wants to pass that on to others to support them. It's really encouraging and I hope I can do the same. This is the past, this is the present, and this is the future. I didn't even realize the extent to the stigma that surrounds mental health until I became part of this and after my diagnosis and realizing it, even though I'd had connection with it through other 
people in the past, I had no idea until I walked those shoes myself how great the stigma is. And it's unfair, it's undeserved, and it's something I will do everything in my power to put aside and let everybody know I'm the same person you knew all my life, and so is everybody else. This is just another illness and something that needs to be treated with, dealt with, and treated fairly. It's hugely important to me. When I first started experience, experiencing my mental health symptoms, I was in my house. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I certainly didn't want to admit to anybody um, you know, that I had mental health issues. And being able to, to do this, to connect with other people, and to be an advocate for the mental health um, is a huge step and I'm so glad I can make it because I really truly believe that we need to you know make it more known and what's out there to help people and I'm hoping that this will do that. No it's not something I ever actually saw happening it's something I hoped and dreamed about but it seemed very far away from where I am right now. I'm just wondering, for anyone who's not familiar with your music, if they wanted to uh, familiarize themselves before the show, what would be a go-to song to, to look at? I hope that this you know, opens up some other opportunities for me, and I hope that other people uh, gain belief in themselves. Core design for me is an enabler, one and the same as recovery. So as much as we focus on recovery as being a big component of mental health care, it can't be done without ensuring patients and families are significantly engaged in a very deep way in the concept of core design. The aspirations of people and society are changing around how they wish to interact with healthcare, and it is on their own terms. It is nothing about me without me at all levels of an organization, at the direct care level, at the programmatic level, but also at the policy level. And some of the highlights that I wanted to share just in this experience you know, from our perspective, you know, was Martha, you know, well all of you is, but you specifically and reaching out to staff, going on GDU and interviewing staff and interviewing Allison and Simone and I know like watching that unfold was pretty powerful experience. Like, I, I'm not something I would have envisioned 10 years ago when we first started telling patient stories. And, and Julie, like, you know, you co-hosted the podcast. You were unsure if you wanted to have your picture taken, but at the end, <laughs> you, ended up, you ended up hosting a podcast. So I thought that was pretty powerful as well. And one thing that will always stand out for me is um, when, you, when Michelle interviewed Brian and, and Ian and how you talked about what that experience meant for you and to see a patient, interviewing a patient, it was, I don't think it was something that those of us who work in public affairs thought we would have seen. That, not that many years ago, and uh, it was just, it was incredible. It was, it was something I'll, I'll, uh, I cherish. And Stacy, you had the toughest job of all. You had to work with Jordan. <laughs> and it was great to see the, the time that you, came, you gave of yourself. You came in when we needed to. You edited the content. You, came, you worked with Jordan on the design, and uh, we really appreciate your efforts as well. Thank you, Michelle. For you, Julie. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> you kept it in mind. He actually listened to your ideas. Collaboration with me, 
and getting me out of my comfort zone. I've grown through this. It's great.